Welcome back to the Castle Grounds Apiary. Today we're going to dive into the temperature sensor data that we've been collecting on our wood versus concrete hive experiment. So if you haven't seen it yet, we devised a way to monitor the brew chamber temperature and humidity using some Xiaomi wireless temperature sensors. Now I started working on this project a little bit before the Broodminder uh, product became available. Otherwise I might've just gone with that. So instead I used these temperature sensors and I modified uh, brood frames and I integrated them in and then I placed one in each uh, wood hive, the live hive and the control hive and one of the live concrete hive and one of the empty concrete hive. And then I also put a ambient temperature sensor on the fence near the hive so, we, so that we could collect outside data and kind of use that as a reference point, if you will. So until this point, I haven't really done a close look at the temperature data. And that's mainly because I wanted to really wait till it got good and hot, good consistent hot weather for more than just a couple days so that we could see what does the temperature do at night when it cools off and then the peak of the day, the peak of the afternoon when it gets as hot as it's gonna get. And for the last month, we've had consistent temperatures in the mid to upper 90s, days over 100. And we haven't had really any cool temperatures. I mean, it gets in the 70s in the evenings um, so I want to go ahead and show you guys what this looks like. Now, I've mentioned this before. One thing I don't like about our temperature and humidity sensing uh, procedure or hardware, software, whatever you want to call it, we don't have a way to export the data. So unfortunately, I'm, my hands are a little bit tied. I have to go into the app, take screenshots of 30-day intervals, and then just kind of line up the line graph with the ranges on the chart and that's as good as I have for now so you'll have to bear with me but it does still give you a pretty good indicator of how the wood compares to the concrete. So let's go ahead and look at the concrete data for the last 30 days. What you'll notice is the, uh, the spikes are pretty extreme or at least they look exaggerated but if you look on the side of the screen the range is fairly small. I think it goes from like 26 to 38. And what you'll see here is that the very lowest point, it got down to 28 degrees Celsius, which is 82.4 degrees Fahrenheit. And it got as high as 37 degrees Celsius, which is 98.6. So 82.4 Fahrenheit to 98.6 Fahrenheit. That is a 17.9% difference from 82 to 98 that's a swing 17 percent swing in the wooden hive with the average being around 35 or 95 degrees and that seems respectable right it never got below 82 degrees inside the hive it never got above 98 degrees inside that hive even when ambient temperature was well above 98.6 i mean it hasn't been over 100 for long periods of time but we never even touched on 100 even with all those high or bees in the box doing work. Now let's look at the concrete hive. You'll see lots of peaks and dips, but it's a smaller range on that uh, on the side there. You see that it only goes from about 33 to 37, I believe. I can't remember off the top of my head. So what we're seeing here is that there's a much narrower band of temperature ranges, which means we're seeing a much better temperature regulation on the concrete hive. The lowest we saw for the entire last 30 days was 34.2. That's the lowest, which is 93.56 degrees Fahrenheit. The highest was 35.7 degrees Celsius, which is 96.26 Fahrenheit. 93 and a half to 96 and a quarter. That is a 2.8% difference between 93 and a half to 96 and a quarter. Compare that to the wood hive, where we saw an 18% swing in temperature from the lows to the high, to the concrete hive, where the swing was less than 3%, which is pretty incredible. And the average 
I mean, it, it, it basically went from 34.5 to 35.5 every day, no matter what the temperature was. So we'll say the average temperature of that high was 35, which is exactly 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which, as we know, is a pretty happy internal temperature for bees. So all that to say, I'm pretty impressed with the way that the bees can manage in a concrete hive. Um, you know, a lot of people have temperature sensors in their hives, but they're just doing it to monitor their condition. And I don't, I don't know what people do with that data currently. In this case, I think it's very helpful. It really helps point towards the bees can work less hard and they can focus on what we want them to do, which is make honey. Now, I wish I could show you the control temperature sensor data, and I can't, unfortunately, and that's because I goofed up and I let the batteries die on my ambient temperature sensor and my concrete control temperature sensor. But I can pull up the control wood hive temperature sensor, and let's see what that looks like on the 30 day. So I'm looking at the wooden control hive, and I'll go ahead and record this so I can overlay it. I'm looking at the wooden control hive data, and what we see over the last 30 days is we range everywhere from, we get down to, I saw 17, 17.8 degrees Celsius, all the way up to 43.5. So that tells you that the bees are actually working fairly hard inside that wooden hive. Without bees present, it would get as cold as 17.8 degrees Celsius. Uh, without bees present, that wooden box would get up to 43.5. Let me do that conversion real quick. Okay, so without bees present in the box, that, that empty wooden hive has gotten down to 64 degrees Fahrenheit and has gotten up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So those bees are working really hard to bring that temperature up from 64 to 82, which was the, that, that matches the dips, the coldest day. And they've worked really hard to get that hive, that box from 110 down to 98. So that's significant. Now I wish I had the concrete empty hive data to present to you guys, I don't right now. I'll try to get that battery replaced and have that for you soon. Uh, but what we do know is, is that the concrete hive does maintain better temperature in the hot months. We will see how it performs in the winter. Um, and we've got a few more, usually August is the hottest month in central Oklahoma. So we'll see how this goes. Maybe we'll find something that we don't expect. Maybe it'll be, uh, I don't know, I kind of expect that concrete data to just flatten out. So let me know what you think. If you guys have any questions, comments, uh, ideas for how to kind of test and analyze which is better, let us know. As always, thanks for watching.